Okay, take six. Um, hopefully I'll get this down. Um, my sister is currently out of the house, so perfect timing to make a video. Um, hopefully I don't ramble on this, and I do apologize for any ums, because I'm trying to think of what I need to say quickly without rambling. Uh, apparently I'm a rambler. Um, but that's okay. I have Elmer Fudd disease too, so I'm doing all right. Um, anyways, on this video, I wanted to discuss something that my friends and family are probably sick of hearing about, but I thought people on YouTube really need to know about this, and basically I'm talking about my sleep disorder. I know there are a lot of people out there that have my sleep disorder. I didn't know that till recently. Thank you, Facebook. Um, but it took a lot of research and a lot of time for me to figure out what was going on and fights with the doctors. When I was a child, I always slept a lot, um, but I didn't sleep so much that it caused concern. I was just a heavy, nice sleeper. Um, family went to Embassy Suites. There was a fire there. I slept through it. Um, luckily, they were able to put it out before. Um, they had to move us, but uh, anyways, uh, when I got older, um, I still slept more, even during my high school years. It wasn't until I was 18 or 19 that things started changing. Um, my doctor at the time took me off of Ritalin, which I had been put on kindergarten or first grade. Um, and it was for my ADHD. Yes, I'm hyper. And yes, there's a mirror over there and I'm trying to stand out of the mirror so I don't see the mirror because it's distracting the hell out of me. And I think that's why I'm on take six um, or seven or wherever I am now. But <laughs> anyways, um, basically they took me off my Ritalin. They said, Christine, you have outgrew ADHD. It wasn't until last year that I figured I didn't grow out of ADHD. I gained coping skills. I learned how to control some of my hyperness. Now, give me caffeine, sugar, dye 40, red, and I'm all over the place, um, including alcohol. Um, I get hyper. Not always a good thing, sometimes is. Um, but basically, um, the doctors took me off of my Ritalin and I didn't have a problem at first that I noticed and I was working two jobs, um, one doing pizza delivery that kept my focus and the next one also kept my focus and that was working with people at, in the geriatric wing at downtown, downtown Baptist Hospital as a CNA. Um, when you're lifting two, three, four hundred pound people and you're hoping another CNA might come help you lift them while you do bed changes and stuff, you kind of need to stay focused. Um, I was also doing school. That was my other job. And within six months, my school grades went down. Um, my life went down. I ended up losing both jobs. One day I got up after going to bed the day before to go to work. I thought, wow, I woke up before the alarms and turned them off so they wouldn't go back off later after I got ready. So I went and got ready and was able to leave the house early. I got to work with Taco Cabana. They had a special. And so I picked some up on the way to work, thought, mm, I can eat at work um, before I get on my shift. And that way I don't have to spend as much time out during lunch doing, uh, trying to go down to the cafeteria and try to get food. Um, it's hard in a hospital to do that sometimes. So basically I picked up my food and I went to the staff lounge and was eating it when the nurse came in and told me, that I had been canned. It was a good 20, 30 minute conversation. She basically started off with, hi, how are you? Where have you been? Do 
do you know what day it is? And I had no clue that my alarm clocks had gone off for two, maybe three days um, because I had slept over 72 hours. I don't know the exact time I slept um, because it's years later, but I know it was over 72 because I missed three days worth of work. And I got canned. Even though I had no idea what was going on, I lost my jobs. I quickly was able to get back one and stay afloat for a while. And I went to a sleep specialist and they sent me to another sleep specialist and then another. All these doctors kept saying, there's nothing wrong with you. You do have sleep apnea. If you use your machine, you'll wake up. You don't have to worry about it. So I kept using my sleep apnea machine my uh, and my nebulizer and making sure I had my lungs completely open and that I was trying to stick to a sleep schedule. That didn't work. Basically, my whole life turned around. I ended up having to fight to keep employed. I had to fight to stay in school, get up for family activities, and when I had my son, I had to fight to stay awake when putting him down to bed. At first, I didn't have a problem when I had him. So he did change some of my lifestyle for a good while. I was able to get up. I call it the mommy genes, <laughs> or the mommy syndrome. Basically, I was a mother and I was able to get up. When my son's around, I get a little kick of that. I'm able to stay up and get get up with him, which is nice. But I don't have him in my life completely anymore because my mom has 50% custody. And I think that's good for the moment. I want to be a mother. I was for four and a half years. I still am, and it's 11 years later. It's just mommy can't afford rent. Mommy can't afford anything. And mommy's broken. <laughs> and broke. But um, anyways, last year a friend of mine sent me an email and said, I want you to look at this. And a lady in Europe, she had written an article for a magazine. She was, she's a freelance writer. And it basically said, my doctors thought I was on drugs. And I thought, wow, what a title. <laughs> How many times have I been told, you must be doing drugs. You don't have a proper sleep schedule. You're not using your CPAP machine. You're not using your nebulizer. You're not going to bed on time and waking up with the alarms because you're not setting them. Or when I get you up, you're too lazy to get up and you're not getting up. Why don't you just set your alarms and get up with them? That's what I hear from my mother. That's what I hear from a lot of my family members. And that's what I hear from my coworkers, my bosses, doctors, everybody. Except for my twin and the other people that suffer from it. And a few friends that understand. And a few friends that say they understand, but don't really. They don't see it all. Basically, I can sleep forever. And at a family reunion, my cousin was drawing all of our family members as different Disney characters, because now he works for Pixar. Um, he was trying to come up with everybody's picture. Mine was easy, Sleeping Beauty. It's funny, because the sister to Ethiopathic Hypersomnia, its nickname is Sleeping Beauty. And I consider myself a Sleeping Beauty. Um, not that I'm beautiful, but oh well. Um, <laughs> anyways, um, basically I was told that I could sleep for up to two or three months. The max I've slept is a little over three days. And I can go to sleep for eight hours, wake up, be up for six, go down for 24, be up for two down for 30, be up for 6, 10 hours, 24 hours, up, and then be back down for two days. I never know how long I'm going to sleep. A nap 
isn't a nap. Most people take a nap 30 minutes, an hour, maybe two. No, my nap is a day, the next day, maybe even the next day. I never know when I'm going to wake up. I never know what's going to happen. I don't know if I'm going to die in my sleep. I have a good feeling that eventually I will. I don't know if I'm going to start a fire or walk outside the door and down the street with nothing on or barely anything on and walk somewhere. That's why I have my service animal. I love my dog and she stays with me. Sometimes she runs off a little bit farther away and comes back, but she always comes back and she always finds me. I've made eggs while I slept. I went to the bathroom while I slept. I have conversations with bosses on the phone with the phone cord wrapped around my neck or the cordless phone tucked underneath my back while I sleep. Yes, I can sleep on the phone. Yes, I can tell them that I'm going to be there. Doesn't mean I'm going to be. It's sad because I'm the girl with a lot of potential. I'm smart and I can apply myself. I just can't stay up long enough to do so. Finding help is like finding a needle in a haystack. Finding a relationship that will endure it is even worse. You have friends that will stay your friends. You have friends that won't. You have your family members that say they understand, just like your friends, but they don't help you when you need it. They don't call that doctor. They don't call your boss. They don't go by your work to see if your boss is there and explain it. They don't help you when you need the help. And there are some people out there that have the same sleep disorder that have help. And I'm glad that they do because they need it. And one day I hope I'll have it. One day. But now that this is turning into a very soppy video, um, <laughs> I also need for the government to change. And I need the laws to change. Because right now, I get hassled when I take my sleeping disorder to work and let them know that basically I have the sleep disorder. I could fall asleep at my desk. Not like a narcoleptic that just passes out, but if I'm tired, I will. I can drive, just not long distances without making sure I'm awake. I have to be awake. So before I make a long distance trip, I always go to sleep. Whenever I wake up is when I leave. Once I'm awake, lots of coffee, lots to drink, lots of potty trips, lots of music turned up loud, windows rolled down, and I can make a trip. Employers don't understand when I walk in with my sleep disorder dog, my service animal, the dog that stays with me in case I fall asleep and tries to wake me up. But if she can't wake me up, she follows me, she goes with me, she stays with me. And because she's a street dog, sometimes I'm afraid she won't come back, but she always has. I keep her attached to me sometimes, what I call leech, a leash probation, in places that I'm not secure, where I don't feel secure. And that's because, despite what everyone else has thought, there are times when I can sleep so hard that I can be raped, and it has happened, by more than one person. And I have slept at places that I shouldn't. 